Well, how are we doing, Gideon's Tactical Crew? Welcome back to another gear review. And yes, we are back in the saddle again, not full-time RVing this time around, but we are going to be doing a bunch of exploring of creation and all of its wonder this summer with the kids. And it is a perfect segue into today's blade that we're gonna be looking at, which has the potential to be an ideal, not only EDC fixed blade for around your property, around town, whatever, but ideal for overlanding, RVing, if you're into that, or tent camping this summer. And you don't want a folder and you don't want like a giant survival knife. You want something that's easy to use, but premium materials like MagnaCut. And that's what I have here with the TJ Schwartz designed Confidant. And we're gonna use it here around the campsite. I've been using it a bunch around the property back at the house as well and out here. So I'm gonna run it down with you guys, show you what its capabilities are, if there are limitations, and stick around to the end of the video because I got some good competitive options to give us some food for thought, including its original sibling, the Overland by TJ. But we'll also talk other, you know, Magna Cut out there, like value options and what, is value really the right way to go or you know real like detail oriented premium pinnacle stuff so i'm going to unpack all of that with you guys and we're just going to have a blast so this is getting tactical i'm aaron let's dive on in Now it's cool because TJ has been working with Magna Cut really since it first came onto the market. He was one of the first designers that I saw producing blades in Magna Cut. So it's super cool to get this model in Magna Cut as well. Rockwell 63 to 64 on the Rockwell scale. So if you're not familiar with Magna Cut, it is an amazing steel, really giving us a lot of hybrid capability. It's very hard to find with other tools. One of the best parts is it's very good rust resistance, insane edge retention, and very good toughness for how high the Rockwell is and how good the edge retention is on the tool. I actually, in uh, my previous video, which we'll look at in competitive options a little bit later, the Overland, I literally dunked that in the Gulf of Mexico and then just let it sit there and I got zero rust spots on it. Now in this uh, iteration, you can get a few different options with the blade coating if you want, you don't have to, it's not necessary, really in my opinion with MagnaCut. Uh, you can get Stonewash, you can get Cerakote Black, which is what I have and Cerakote Coyote currently in 2023 when I'm making this video, more options may occur down the line. Now it has a flat grind ground in on either side uh, to 18 degrees, so 36 degrees. Hopefully I'm doing my math right there. Uh, conducively and 18 on each side with that flat grind on 0.13 inches thick all the way through full tank construction there. And from the scale to the tip, three and a half inches even, which is great. I know a lot of fixed blades in this size arena. They oftentimes go like three and three quarters, uh, you know, 3.75. And then if you're trying to, you know, carry a fixed blade in certain environments, certain states, certain locations, you know, like three and a half and you're a little like, uh, you know, and you're a quarter inch over, am I really gonna carry it? So the fact that from the handle scale to the tip, three and a half inches, cutting edge three and a half inches, excellently done. Belly, nothing but belly on this blade and I love it. So this is a slicing machine because of the high flat grind, the thickness of just a hair over an eighth, and then just the edge geometry itself, just done so well. Uh, it, 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 I'm trying to come up with a word. Its ability to fillet material is outstanding. I'm very impressed with its capability, not only in your general EDC tasks that you may want to do, and I think a lot of us would carry it in that role, uh, but also in compact bushcraft tasks, feather stick making, a little bit of notching, you know, making a tent peg, spear point for marshmallows, uh, around a campfire, you know, whatever it is as well as food prep, being able to do food, food prep and preparation to throw on your Blackstone or your grill while you're um, out there camping with the family or you know, you're out there uh, miles and miles backpacking. I love this. The tip even drops. So it, it is just about in line with the bolts themselves, making it very balanced. But that also, that little drop helps with the gutting, particularly of fish and the control. So it's not, you know, like the point is too far out. It comes in giving you a better ability to penetrate your fish and then clean it out. As we just went literally fishing today with the boys, sadly didn't catch anything, but I had this on the belt, ready to rock and roll and gut a fish if necessary. And I can't wait to do so with this tool. So that's a nice little touch right there 
on the blade portion. So the workhorse part, the blade itself, is absolutely doing the job with some of the most premium blade steel you can get. And guys, if you're enjoying this type of content, I invite you to pummel that like button. Hit it, letting YouTube know that you not only like this channel, but knife content and gear reviews in general. Uh, it really helps out the algorithm. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I do invite you to consider subscribing, becoming part of the Gideon's Tactical crew and following along. Make sure to hit that bell icon so that you can be notified every week when I put up new content, give you guys breakdowns, uh, concepts and tips and tricks on gear and equipment to help you better stay equipped and prepared for whatever life throws your way. Now with the handle, there are so many variations as well. Uh, I'll give you basic specs real quick. It's going to be a four and a quarter inches overall length, and you're gonna have a thickness of about 0.55. So that's about the thickness of your average pocket knife. So take that in consideration. Obviously, if you are wanting an hour of bushcrafting, like a more a companion with an inch diameter, you know, handle, is gonna be more ideal for that. This is walking that fine line of giving us ergonomics, but also wanting to be slim and concealable for more regular carry on your body in a lot of different tasks, a lot of different environments. And so that's what this um, handle design is attempting to do here. And I'll walk us through that. Now, the handle scales, you can get many variants, a lot are in G10, which is what I have in different colors, but you can also get canvas micarta if that's your jam. Now, you can also customize on top of that the screw themselves and the screw collars so I want these like copper bronze style underneath the black screws that match the black blade and then you have these really nice rounded everywhere you know there's no sharp angles on those scales recessed screws the screws are recessed in there so they're not protruding from the scale which is great and then you have these all these little texture points that are not hot but definitely give it some good grip so and depending on how you're gonna carry it for me being close to the body carrying it a lot I prefer g10 over canvas micarta i like canvas micarta more on like big survival knives and like camp knives now as you can notice here this the tang is crowned so uh it's rounded and this is exactly like what we had on the overland previously from uh tj before and so some knives can do it well some cannot uh, no hot spots i don't feel any discomfort uh, you know, even when I was gripping it in a hammer grip and then doing hard pressure push is down for feather sticks and those type of things, no issues whatsoever. Uh, obviously, again, going back to the idea though, it is a 0.55 inch thick handle. So it's just not as girthy and round as like a bushcraft knife. Like, a, you know, here's a Hella. I mean, you can see the difference there, but these are very different designed tools to do different things, be carried in different ways. So um, it walks that line well, I believe. Good guard there with my large size hands, plenty of real estate, little lanyard hole, even though I think it's, it's not necessary uh, to have a lanyard hole on this size of a tool. And then you got some machining right there. So you can do like pinch grips, you know, for caping, you can really put your thumb right there on the scale and, you know, guide the blade if you want to. And even in chest lever grips, you know, you're easily able to do those type of tasks. So food prep, general EDC and outdoor tasks, the handle is able to accomplish a lot of those tasks, really only like self-defense roles. It's not really designed for that. Um, would I see it not really excelling? So we continue the customization theme with the sheath options. Now this is a pancake design, really nice and slim, lots of eyelets. Now it's gonna come standard black Kydex, uh, I believe black eyelets and then set up for righty carry. But you can go into customization features. You can get it set up for lefties. You can get it set up for ambidextrous. You can do no attachments outside of the eyelets if you want that. Or you can go with leather sheaths, right or left, left made and designed by TJ's dad who's been working with leather for years. So there's just a, a level of not only options, but quality there that's excellent. In this iteration, I got... Uh, eyelets that are brass or bronze in design matching those spacers behind the bolts to hold on the handle scale and then on the righty side it has that really nice clip that will go into over your pocket or over your belt loop or waistband and these screws have been recessed in it's kind of like what we see a lot of times in holsters with firearms so, but you can unscrew that completely if you wanted to, but you can see how it's been molded for the righty. So you'd have that molded for lefties or you can have ambidextrous features or just none of that. And you just want to do your own blade tech lock or molly locks or however you do it, but you can hear how secure that 
solid click is. You're not gonna lose this thing. Lots of carry options and great to carry like under your clothing. In fact, I was running some errands in town today uh, as we're camping and it was perfect for that. I just, you know, able to conceal it and be able to do what I need to do. So I appreciate TJ hooking me up with this particular model so that I could show you guys its capabilities and limitations so that you can better determine for yourself if the Confidant is the right tool, if the Overland or you know just other options that are out in the market in general. Uh, now, as we are looking at this tool, it's the same price as its sibling, the Overland, which is going to be $295, just shy of $300 for American made, magnet cut, fully customizable on the front end and the back end from uh, like a one man show, basically TJ making these himself, you know, and, and producing these and partnership and his dad helping him out with the she's. I mean, it's just really, really cool. Obviously, you know, it's on the higher end for these type of materials and as more and more people are using magnet cut. So you'll have to determine for yourself if this is fitting the right value to performance. For me, I see a lot of capability and a lot of the options and just like pinnacle of refinement and making sure that everything is done well. I'm not like 10,000 of these stamped out and just like thrown on you know store shelves because there is a lead time depending on when you order these all that's on the website uh as these are being produced kind of in a way for you so i'll have links for you guys in the description below this video not only for the confidant but for the overland and now the more compact overland sport uh that goes for about 265 i believe that's a little bit smaller and just kind of show you here uh the overland definitely has more of like a chef knife feel uh, and again, has tons of customization, magnet cut, again, that high flat grind, really well done and very unique. So if you like uniqueness, I mean, you got a lot to work with there. The handle is a very unique design, fills out my hand really well. This is a more, I guess, organic profile and design for that may fit people's personalities maybe a little bit more uh, not to say that the overland is not an excellent performer and it's crazy even though it looks like a, a crazy drop the tip is actually directly in line with the lanyard hole that's just how well executed you know the fi finish is there all that and then same type of leather or kydex options and all that, that you can go with so it's really going to come down to your kind of preference i would say probably the handle is just a little bit longer on the overland yeah, it's about four and five eighths. So it's just a hair longer. So if you have really big hands, but you like all the materials, that may be the way to go. But it, part of that is kind of like a drop off. So you had really, really large hands, maybe kind of back there. Whereas again, I have full grip, full real estate, bam. I'm gripping that tool. So uh, hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit between those two. But I know many of you are probably asking, well, but what about the SPL from Ontario? You know, that's like half the cost, about $150, maybe even a little bit less. You could buy two of these for one. Uh, Confidant, Magna Cut, American Made. Well, and I'm, I'm gonna try and be kind here. Yes, if you are just wanting Magna Cut at the cheapest price point in the size range, then yeah, I mean, go with this. It's gonna be a lot cheaper and it's kind of in the same size range. But it's kind of like slapping a turbocharged V8 in a jalopy. If you ever owned an Ontario, uh, you know, the fit and finish isn't always there. There's some aspects I'll highlight here real fast. You know, like the lanyard hole is not lined up properly. There's actually a huge lip inside there. The scales have, you know, lips on them all over the place. The grind is not uh, conducive. The tip is ground off to one side. It was kind of thick behind the edge. Uh, it's gonna be 3.9 inches. So depending on EDCing, you know, if you're not EDCing it, then it's not a big deal. But if you are, that's something considerable with blade lengths. And then you got those G10 handle scales. They're large and full. You know, you definitely got some good grip there. Very slick. You're going to get a lot better texture, you know, on that. And really, particularly in this size range, your sheath has got to fit what you're doing. And this sheath, I'm sorry, is just not it. Uh, I appreciate what they're trying to do. There's this tension clip in there. Uh, these slits, the larger slit can barely accommodate on thin nylon inch and a half inch belt. And that's it. And it's only for righties. Uh, if you have, and I usually wear 1.75 wide belts and they will not fit through here. And most leather belts are going to have a very difficult time passing through that. And then this lower one, I mean, it's out of the question and there's no other lashing. There's no other options, you know, and, and to have the ability to lash and carry in multiple ways is vital. I believe in this size range. And then you're obviously, you know, going to get a lot of options you know that one guy is basically overseeing and doing this whole process himself you know and and doing that you know at this current time in 2023 
gives you the ability to know that you're dialing it in, you're getting exactly what you want, and you're getting it at perfect, excellent peak refinement. So, you know, you gotta determine for yourself. Value with kind of a lot of messy edges, meaning like around the edges, or do you want, you know, refinement, capability, and performance? That's obviously up for you guys to determine. That's what I always try to do in these type of videos, give you guys food for thought and help you make the wise choice. So I appreciate you guys coming over today, watching this video. I really look forward to hearing all the comments and any questions that you guys have. I invite you to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it for you. And I invite you to, again, check out the other video popping up and to subscribe if you haven't yet. Until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.